tight, add to tuna. Captain Don Petrarca here from Coastal Charter Sport Fishing, and um, we're gonna show you and walk you through my jigging setup for these Cape Cod Bluefin Giants. Um, we'll start out with the basic jig stick. I get my blanks from Jigging World, Jigging World Corporation down out of New Jersey. This is their 450 gram conventional jig stick. I myself prefer conventional reels over spinning for jigging, for, especially for Giants. Um, number one, because you have a better system for fighting the fish. It's, it's an overhead reel. And so as you are working everything, bring this down so I don't knock anybody out with it, but everything here is in a perfect lever. The rod bends, everything's in the same direction, and the pickup is where it's mechanically advantageous. When you spin everything around with a spinning reel, it's all 90 degree angles and your lift is facing the wrong direction. So that's the reason I use the conventionals is that they're kinder, but also these fish hit a lot on the drop, especially with this point you jig that I like. Um, and so when they hit on the drop, you have a lot more contact and you have ability to instantly get the drag by just clicking the lever, engaging the lever. And so this 450 rod is acid wrapped and it's acid wrapped to eliminate twist. And we'll create that. As you can see, everything stays in line. However, the guides, are off center, either acid wrap or spiral wrap, that's called. And that is to prevent roll from occurring under heavy load with these big fish. So to that, we spool it up with 80 pound, I myself anyway, I, I, I like tough line. I've used it for years. It's, the reason being is that it's 16 carrier AD and it has the thinnest diameter for me. So 80 pound, tough line guide's choice. Um, doesn't matter the color, I prefer white, but with uh, the shortages, I'm using moss green here. Um, it's hollow core. And so at the end, the leader here is pre-fashioned. That's a wind-on leader. Um, you can make your own like I do. You can get them through Jigging World now. Um, when they're back in stock, you can get them from BHP. But it's your basic wind-on leader with a serve. Um, there's an insertion. See how touchy that spool is. Let me lock this. So here's your main line. That's the braid. We have an end loop fashioned here, which you can use Daho rigging needles. I use just a piece of straight wire, number six, um, bent and twisted. So there's an end loop in the main line. To the end loop, we cat's paw. I use a single cat's paw, so it's just pass the loop through one way, take the tag end of the leader through, bring everything down, cinch it up so that the loops are nice, come tight, and it's a nice seamless connection. I favor 100 pound um, Seaguar Premier. For, for, for my fluorocarbon, um, anything from 100 to 130 is appropriate. Anything lower with these larger giants and you're, you're, you're not being fair to yourself or the fish because you can't put the heat. And by heat, I mean the drag and the pressure that's created through the system. And so I have here the O'Shea Jigger, which is a new reel from Shimano. Um, I also use the Talicas, it's the Talica 16 single speed, which is a lever drag. This is a star drag, and this is the first full season where these are available in the US market. They've been used successfully over in Japan for a bit. Um, but this star drag, it, it puts out enough drag and the drag system in it is nice and fluid and it takes the lever out, guessing the drag ramp where you are. You're either engaged and you have the drag that you set it at or you're not. And so with the lever drag system, there's that sort of in between of when you're at strike and what you get in full, but what you get halfway up. And sometimes in haste, you don't click it all the way to strike. You don't hammer it forward. So this is why I'm using this O'Shea. This is the 4000 HG, which is the high gear model. Um, nice narrow spool for jigging. So it's real comfortable and ergonomic in your hands. To that leader down at the very bottom here, I've been using the same system. We use a uh, swivel. And so a barrel swivel or a crane swivel, which is actually the appropriate terminology, is done at the bitter end. And I attach my leader without the knot. You're forced to either crimp or not to get your terminal gear in contact with your ultimate offering, which in this case is the Point Jude 310 Deep Force Jig with an assist cord. Got the barrel swivel. I use a Palomar knot. It's the only knot for me. I can tie it myself all the way up to 150. I can do it in the dark. I can do it cold. I can do it hot. I can do it hurried. I can do it rushed. To me, it's the least subjective of the knots because of its simplicity. And when it's done right, 
it actually, in some cases, breaks over the line strength because it's doubled up twice through the ring before it's cinched down. So use that Palomar knot. It's the one knot I use at that bitter end. Um, it takes away the crimping, um, the need for crimps. There's extra gear with crimps. There's extra steps with crimps. And crimping is always subjective based on the crimp that you use and the amount of pressure. So take all of that guesswork out. This is a knot that if it's seated properly is never gonna fail. To that, you have your split ring. In this case, um, I've gone to Mustad. I was a Spro guy for a long time, and the gap, they changed the gap on the ring, on their power swivel, for whatever reason, I don't know. So now the split ring doesn't pass through anymore. And so with these Mustads, they're actually big enough where it'll pass through, and so you're off of the opening in the split ring. This solid ring is then also attached to the same split ring, and that's where my assist cord gets done. Um, I'm using a big, almost like a circle hook. This is a live bait, um, BMC in this case, or a Mustad, uh, same exact style. Um, again, with the product shortages and whatnot, I'm forced to use you know what's available. I know um, this one's straight out of the box. Jeff uh, Martins from Point Jude is using the same hook that I use because you know we experimented with it and he's having the same shortages. So, but that's what you want to use. Um, you can either get them pre-done through Mustad, you can get them pre-done through VMC, or you can make your own. I make my own in this case. This is Paracord. Uh, this is 600 pound, um, shock cord it's called sometimes. There's 300 pound, there's 500 pound, there's 600. I use the big heavy stuff. Underneath is just a simple overhand knot, which is then shrink tube to prevent the fray and to keep a little bit more of a solid effect to the hook. It doesn't slide around as much. That swing hook is what that fish gets. When, when this is dropping and it's down on the bottom there um, and they go to take the offering, they're immediately gonna spit it because it's metal. And this swing hook is much more adept at going in and when it comes out, swinging around and getting that fish in that latch, which is right at the corner of the mouth. The corner of the mouth is where you want tuna hooked. It doesn't let the line get over their teeth. Yes, they have super sharp teeth, even though it doesn't look like it. Those teeth will rake over the line if it's hooked anywhere other than in the corner. And so that swing hook system using via the assist cord now this point too, you can buy these deep forces right out of the box. They're ready to use. You have the appropriate length. You want it about three quarters of the way down. You don't want it lower. You also want to choose a hook that's not going to slide over and get caught. So you want it to be able to slide off and out. If it's the wrong curb and the jig is too fat, it's going to sit there and it's going to lock. And then you're going to miss your bite when you get it. 500 yards or so almost, you can get on these um, if they're packed right. Um, most cases, most tackle shops will be able to get you 380 to 450 yards or so. Um, it's the places that really tension everything down, put the drag proper on the reel, and then combine that with a gloved hand on the spool as it fills the line. You could pack a ton of line into these. Puts out enough drag in combination with the realization that you're using light tackle, so you have to be able to gain back enough line between a large fish's runs at the start of a fight. Um, and it's the lightweight ability. You're fighting the fish as opposed to the gear here. And so it's mobile. Um, this is my favorite setup. This is the setup I, I, I hope to see in play when we hook one of those big ones. Um, you can use the spinning rod, like I mentioned. I just myself have found that over the years, you miss less bites and they're a little bit more comfortable to fight on the bigger fish using the conventional setup, which is why I brought this one today. You can use a Stella, um, you know, the 20,000 or one of the Daiwas, but the only two spinning reels that are available that still can handle the abuse and, 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 and put out enough drag and hold enough line. Um, but I feel like you miss a ton of hits using spinning reels for, for jigging. And so um, that combined with an open bail, when a fish grabs it on the drop, it's really kind of scary to, to reach out and to, to slap that bail closed. And then you have that little lag time. This immediately is bent in the right direction and the drag is engaged. There's that slight delay from when the fish picks it up where you have to not only flip the bail but then the loading of the rod. And so I find a lot of times they pull the hook or they shear us off right away with the spinning rod. So that's my basic setup. Um, you know, if you rig it like this, I can guarantee you that when you do break off a fish, if you've done everything else, the weakest part, even though it's such a strong knot, you're not gonna leave anything in the fish trailing. You're not gonna leave braid. You're not gonna leave a big long leader which is better for the fish in the long run. Um, we are sportsmen and need to promote a little bit of conservation and you know, practice responsible methods. Um, so this one here I found is, is, is you know, the best thing you can put in your hands if you wanna get going and start to try to get some of these bigger fish hooked up and be successful at landing them.